welcome to Around Town with Rotary. Uh, my name is Mike Harrington. Uh, our show highlights the Beverly Rotary Club and our members and all the cool activities that we get involved with around the city of Beverly. Uh, I'm joined today by my co-host, Al Temkin, my partner in crime. And we're also joined by our special guest here today, Marshall Hanley. Al, why don't you take it away with Marshall? Thank you, Mike. Welcome, Marshall, to our show. Uh, we're going to talk uh, quite a bit today, certainly about Rotary and and uh, all kinds of personal things about you because you have such a very interesting background. But you know what? I think it might make sense for our viewing audience to, to um, kind of get a better idea of your background, including your family, where you're from, those kinds of things, and just kind of help us understand uh, who you are and where you're from. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not a Beverly resident all my life. I was born in Madison, Wisconsin, um, where my dad was working for the, um, for the state of Wisconsin. Um, we lived there for a couple of years and shortly thereafter moved to Oregon, where, um, where he took over the uh, mental hospitals and state prisons in Oregon. And it was a, it was a funny time of, uh, in Oregon because the warden of the state prison system was senile and uh, organized crime was running the prisons as safe houses and the uh, and you've all seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which is about the, uh, the Oregon State mental health system. So, uh, so that was a fun time, a real challenge for my dad, and I uh, got him going in state administration. Um, the state of Wisconsin decided they couldn't live without him, so he moved back and took over running the state bureaucracy for uh, the governor, Gaylord Nelson, who later became senator. Um, he, he was involved with Jack Kennedy's campaign in Wisconsin, and uh, as a result, Kennedy asked him to join him in the diplomatic service, uh, so we were sent off to Turkey in 1961. <clears throat> um, we lived in Turkey for seven years, uh, and it was a fun time, a very interesting time in Turkey, because it was kind of the... Uh, the end of, of the ancient world and the beginning of the new. A lot of Turkey didn't have electricity or, or telephones, um, so it was a real opportunity to, to explore and experience um, a really basic uh, Asian culture. Um, and, uh, and so we had a, had a tremendous time there and learned a lot about, about adventure. Um, after Turkey, we um, came back to the US, my dad finished his doctorate in public administration, and we were then assigned to Amman, Jordan in 1968. Uh, Jordan at that time was a, was a pretty exciting place. Uh, the June War had ended a couple of days before we got to Jordan, and the, um, and the, uh, the, the civil wars hadn't started. Um, so we, we lived uh, right next door to the, to the King of Jordan and got to know him and, and the current King Abdullah pretty well. Um, spent a lot of time um, in, the, in the Gulf of Aqaba with uh, sometimes at the King's Palace. Um, and uh, and that, was, that was a fun and, and interesting experience. These are what, what, what years of your life were, were these now? I was, we, I, we moved to Jordan when I was 14, and I stayed there until, um, well, I, I w actually went to boarding school in Beirut because there were no American schools in Jordan. Um, so we, I went to boarding school in Beirut my, the first two years of high school. Then um, in, in 1970, uh, I don't know, you may be familiar with the, the term, the Black September Movement, the, the guys who blew up uh, the uh, the Olympics in uh, in Munich, mm -hmm. that they took the name from uh, September 1970 in in Jordan, which was known as Black September, <clears throat> when uh, one of the king's relatives had been killed by a Palestinian in Cairo, uh, and the the fellow who killed him. Uh, uh, dipped his hand into the into the blood of the man as he lay dying, and the king's family, the Hashemite tribe, decided that the Palestinians had to leave Jordan as a result. 
Wow. And, uh, and that they drove the Palestinians out in this period called Black September into Damascus. And then the Palestinians moved into, into Lebanon, which started the cascading problems that Lebanon experienced, uh, the civil wars and, uh, mm -hmm. and the disruption of the kind of coalition that had run Lebanon for, for years and years and years. So was it, was it right about then uh, that you came to the States? That, that's when we moved to the States. You, actually, it's, it's a little known uh, factoid that on September 11th, 1970, uh, four airliners were hijacked and landed at Dawson's Field in Jordan. And that was the original 911. And the, 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 the Palestinians and the people who you know, the, the supported them in terror always looked at 911 as a significant date. So the, when we talk about the World Trade Center, we think of that as the original 911, but the, but the uh, Palestinian terror organizations consider it to be an anniversary. Um, I went oh, to ho hum. You just had your typical American adolescence, <laughs> like a lot of us have, huh? in Jordan and in Turkey. And yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to count the number of times I had been shot at, and, and uh, we got up to about 13. Um, but, uh, and only once was I, uh, did, they, did they get me? I got a little bit of rock salt in my backside uh, for doing something that I probably shouldn't have been doing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was interesting. You know, the, our family motto was keep your head down and keep moving. Oh, goodness. Now, did you folks live uh, with embassy people or, or how much, how much uh, immersion in Turkey did you have on a day-to-day -day basis? In, in, in Turkey, our immersion was, was pretty much complete. Um, we had our, we, you know, we had our own home. Um, we had, uh, uh, I, actually my, my, youngest brother was born in Turkey. We, we learned Turkish uh, at a very early age and we, you know, we had no television. I had no television at all um, from probably 1960 until 1970. Um, we just never watched TV. I did have a little bit in 1968 where if you want me to recite all of the car commercials, I can, I can give you those verbatim because Turkey, uh, television was such an am amazing thing, but, uh, but we, we were television free and, uh, and there was no internet, there were no parental controls. So we were just on our own, um, kind of pounding around the countryside, uh, having a good time. Yeah, well, you didn't miss much. There were only three channels back in those days, but uh, there were some classics, Gilligan's Island and uh, I Dream of Jeannie, you know. Well, in 1970, we were evacuated from Jordan um, and taken out by elements of the 82nd Airborne uh, because of the, the life had kind of fallen apart. Our house had come under fire. Um, the, the CIA had removed some of the servants from the house who had turned out to be agents of the, uh, I think it was a popular front for the liberation of Palestine. Um, and we we were evacuated to to Greece, um, outside of Athens, and uh, where we became a headache enough for my mother that she put us on my older brother and I on a steamer and cut us loose in the Aegean for the summer, um, which was uh, an experience. I don't know if you remember uh, Joni Mitchell and her album Blue. Um, she sings about uh, the caves of Matala which are, were on the southern side of Crete. And we wandered through there. It was packed full of hippies and everybody was living the summer of love there uh, in, in 1970. But we, it, it got worse and worse. And finally they decided we had to leave. And so we came back and uh, moved to Virginia where I met my, my beautiful wife, uh, Carla. We were classmates together at McLean High School and we went to our junior and senior proms together. Um, it was interesting, and I, and I and I obviously you said your beautiful wife, so that's got to be coming up on quite a few years, I'm assuming. Forty. We've yeah. been married for forty. We've been dating for fifty. My goodness, that's a long time. That's a long time. 
Yeah, yeah. I taught her how to drive. Oh, is that right? <laughs> wow. Well, she taught her how to drive standard stick. She was, her, her father sacrificed a, uh, a Buick Skylark uh, to her initial <laughs> education. Well, if you can get her to driving lessons, I guess that was a good start to a long, great relationship. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's my, my law partner now and, and obviously my life partner. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah, so you're, 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 you're both practicing attorneys now. We are. Here in Beverly. That's correct. Handley and Cox. Yeah. And how, how many years has that been going on? We've been practicing together here since 1994. Nice. Nice. And I, I'm very well aware of the reputation of your firm, which is, which is outstanding. Outstanding. <laughs> Absolutely outstanding. Um, you know, here's a, here's a question for you, Marshall, particularly with your background. How did you end up here in Beverly? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting story. Um, my, but to be, to be fair, my ancestors lived in Salem. Mm -hmm. uh, they left in 1689. Um, I, I think they'd gotten wind of the witch trials coming up and said, it's time for us to screw but, um, but no, we were living in Belmont and she was practicing law in Danvers and I was practicing in Boston. And she said, well, I think we're going to have a child. So I want to get a little closer to where I'm, where I'm working. So I was scuba diving out of Beverly because Beverly had the only place to get your tanks filled. And so I said, you know, I don't mind moving up here as long as we're on the railroad track, on the highway and on the ocean and you know there aren't too many places around here that that, yep. uh, that bill so beverly it was and we're we were lucky to have found it and very happy to be here uh, extraordinary well, marshall you and carla have been blessed with beautiful kids want to tell us a little bit about your children i have three daughters my oldest ellen was born in beverly she is uh, a product of St. Mary's School and Bishop Fenwick. Um, she is currently a senior vice president of Bank or uh, Merrill Lynch um, and uh, is attending MIT for her master's of business administration. Knock on wood. Number two, Anne Marie was also born in Beverly. She went to St. Mary's and Beverly High School, attended uh, Mass College of Art and Design, and she's an administrator at MIT. Lives in Boston with her husband. My youngest, Laura, um, went to uh, all Beverly schools all the way. Um, uh, graduated from uh, UMass Amherst and uh, finished just finished her master's degree at Fletcher uh, School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts, and is hoping for. Uh, and a, to follow in my father's footsteps and, uh, and, and pursue a life of diplomacy. Hmm. Sounds like everyone's doing great. They're all scuba divers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> naturally, naturally. <laughs> of course, that, that's, uh, that's terrific. And they're all, I think they're all, if, as I know, they're, they're all fairly local, I believe. Uh, Ellen lives in Beverly, Anne Marie lives in uh, South Boston, and Laura currently lives in Laramie, Wyoming. Tom? Local enough. <laughs> Local two out of three is not bad. <laughs> Terrific. Um, so, you know, you mentioned scuba diving, and, and, yep. and I know that's a passion of yours. Uh, you got a story or two I would, I, I would I have guess a you want to share? We started scuba diving well, when I when I was a kid, we used to go to the beaches, and and I was amazed by these guys who'd come out of the water with these. At, the, at that time, they weren't nylon; they were just shiny rubber suits with these, you know, knives on their legs and these, you know, oh, it was it was something I had to do. And my my so we we took up snorkeling when I was really little, and we were snorkeling along in. Uh, on the Aegean coast one day and this older guy came over to us and he said, what are you doing? I said, we're snorkeling. He says, well, you should try these. And he gave us uh, a scuba rig to fool around with for the day. And 
we used it. And he said, you know, just bring it back. So it turned out that, that we brought it back to the Calypso. He was in to, to lecture um, at, a, at the hotels and it was, it was uh, Cousteau himself who had, uh, who had loaned us the gear. Um, years later, or in 1968, I dove with Philippe Cousteau and the, and the um, Calypso in the, in the Red Sea in the Gulf of Aqaba. They had come in looking for a local diver who knew his way around and that was pretty much me. Um, so we dove with them there. I've been diving since 1964. I think uh, my dive card is, is older than most of the kids who are, most of the people who are diving today and I, my, certainly my gear is. Um, but uh, we've been diving all over the world and, uh, and, and having a good time. Last year we were, I was diving on a, uh, on a rotary, uh, on the benefits of a rotary raffle in Fiji. And, uh, and wow. we had a, a, a terrific encounter with a, a, a large school. And I say large, it's about 160 um, 12 foot bull sharks uh, at about 85 feet of water. And that was one of the more exciting moments of my dive career. So, um, not the wow. Well, that is some really cool stuff. Hey guys, we're going to take just a minute or two break here. Uh, I know we're going to, we're going to load up a great video so the folks at home can watch a little bit about the Beverly Rotary Club and some of the great activities we're working on. So uh, everybody hang in there. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Thank you. We raise a lot of money for Beverly organizations. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They help buy our school bus. They fund the annual Brad Gage ice cream social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than 100 trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. Welcome back, everybody. You are, we're here with our guest, uh, current president of the Beverly Rotary Club, Marshall Hanley. And uh, so, Marshall, certainly congratulations on your uh, selection as our president this year. Uh, uh, certainly, if not the most challenging year any of us have ever faced, uh, uh, I, I would say it probably is, in fact, the most challenging year that, that we've faced. But let's, let's kind of get a little background. Um, how long have you been involved with Rotary and, and uh, how, how did all of that happen? I, you know, I, I probably should have looked at that before I got on here. I, I've been with Rotary since the mid nineties. Um, and uh, I, I, I was the city solicitor and Bill Scanlon, the mayor was a member of Rotary. And uh, one of the things that I kept seeing was that all of the people that he talked about in Rotary were the same people that were, you know, making things happen in the city. Um, and Bill, geez, you know, why don't you join Rotary? And, you know, at the time I thought, geez, that'd probably be a pretty smart move. Um, you know, I can get to get to know the movers and shakers and we can, you know, we can converse. It really, it wasn't, uh, I didn't join out of altruism. I, uh, I, I joined more out of, uh, uh, self-interest. Um, and, and at the time, uh, the, Rot the Beverly Rotary Club was described, I don't know if you remember Bill Scotty, but, but he, he owned Scotty Piano and he was a, he was a, a long time guy. I he, met him a couple of times. I didn't know him. I, I met him a couple of times. He and yeah. I knew each other. And Bill said, geez, why do you want to join Rotary? He was a member. He says, it's just an 
um, meet, greet, eat, belch, and go home club. <laughs> well, he's got us pegged. <laughs> you know, at the time, at the time, you know that was probably a pretty fair description. Uh, we we had meet every week at the at the old Commodore, and uh, and um, and and just pretty much uh, socialized. But and I and I don't remember at what point it started to change. But there was in the in the late '90s and early 2000s, we had some really dynamic leadership and an infusion of energy and, um, and altruism that really moved the club into a, a social or public service um, kind of dynamo. Um, and I was, I was increasingly impressed by the enthusiasm that, that the people who, who were members, I mean, these are people who had you know, real full-time jobs. I mean, the, generally um, pillars of the community, busy, busy people. And they were all pitching in to, to do uh, remarkable things. And, uh, and that, um, that, that impressed me a lot. I mean, you, you, you're familiar with the, the gazebo, um, the, the, the bookmobile, the refrigerator truck for, uh, for, um, uh, Beverly Bootstraps. Bootstraps, yeah. The um, it there there is an awful lot of good coming out of this. Uh, the the school bus for Beverly Children's Learning Center. I mean, it was one one impressive thing after another, and and that that started to that started to catch my interest. You know, it was it was less of a of. I mean, the meetings, the meetings were a good place to associate, but there was so much more going on outside the meetings and Rotary was, was really a driving force for, for a lot of, a lot of good in this community and, and other places. And still is, as a matter of fact, right? It still is. Yeah. Um, and it, it struck me, I, I got hooked when I saw the, my first rotoplast mission I didn't. I haven't been on Rotoplast, but Rotoplast is the is the rotary effort where they repair uh, cleft lips and cleft palates of of children who who really have no other way of of getting repaired. And um, and to be honest, I know I I was born with I I had a, a problem that that kept me on crutches in in a wheelchair from the time I was born until the time I was six or seven, um, and kids can be cruel, and you know they were they were hard on me when when we went overseas. We, used to, we would go into a village, and if you'd see a kid with a deformity, there that was it. They were shunted off to the side, and what Rotary was doing with Rotoplast, you know, for, for short money, $500 a, a person were, was transformative. They were taking these children and, and giving them a life, um, giving them an opportunity to, to, to live a full life as a, as a, a, a member of their community without the, without the shunning and the abuse that, uh, that they would otherwise have been subjected to. And that really, that really got me. That was the that was the moment when I decided that that Rotary was was on the right track. And, so, and these and these surgeries, Marshall, tell me if I'm correct, are, are done in third world countries. They are. They are by 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 American or you know volunteer physicians uh, you know, who and and volunteer Rotary volunteers who go and um, and make it happen. Right. But they do, you know, a, a large volume of, of surgeries, and um, and they correct, um, you know, uh, physically and cosmetically these, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, tremendously disfiguring uh, facial defects. Right. Which is which is. So really Marshall, how did that twenty? Now it's been over twenty years. You've been a Rotary. How did you become president? How'd that all come about? <laughs> Well, this isn't my first rodeo on that one. I, uh, <clears throat> I was actually going to be president maybe 15 years ago, maybe a little more, um, when our, the, the guy who was going to be president um, suffered the loss of his wife. And at the last minute, you know, 
everybody else, you know, backed up and I was left in the, in the front and uh, I got, I was told I was going to be president. So we went through all of it and it wasn't a good time for me. I mean, my kids were all uh, in or going to college and, uh, and uh, you know, I was busy. Um, and fortunately at the last minute, um, the, the guy who had had to back out decided that he would come back in and, uh, and um, took and relieved me of that burden. And then I got a call just a couple of years ago from Matt Piacker, who said, you know, would you do this? And I, I think I must have had probably too much to drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, yeah, OK. And uh, and then, you know, it's kind of like the dog that chases a car down the street, you know, and the car stops. You know, now what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> Well, that'll teach you to drink and answer the phone. Now you know well, better. I, 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 shortly <laughs> after that, I got rid of my landline. So. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Taking, um, Marshall, taking Rotary now up to current times, um, can, you, can, can you tell our viewers how we've reacted to the COVID-19 situation? Well, the Beverly Rotary Club has, has made... Uh, COVID response and a local COVID response, the kind of the, the cornerstone or the forefront of our of our relief efforts for the coming year. Um, and we lost uh, at the at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. We lost Don Kelly, who was uh, just an irreplaceable. Guy, uh, you know, an absolute pillar, not just of Rotary, but of the community in general. And um, the, the club's uh, uh, initial response to it, uh, you know, after you know, tremendous shock and sorrow was to, to try and, and generate some money in his name. And, uh, you know, it is an extraordinary ad hoc effort um, that, that put together, oh, I, I, I know it was ten thousand dollars in 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 a week, um, and that became the the basis or the, the 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 foundation for our fundraising efforts going forward. And at this point, we've raised, and I, I, I could be wrong, but not very wrong. I think around seventy one thousand dollars so far to dedicate uh, to solving Beverly COVID related problems. And when I say Beverly, we're, we're looking to assist people who work here, people who, or people who live here, people who have businesses here, people who have a direct association with Beverly. You know, a lot of times in the, in the past, you know, we've, we've reached, we, we broaden our horizon. We've, you know, we've tried to do things for Gloucester. We've done things for, for Ipswich, we've you know we've we've tried to be a lot broader, but this year, um, I think we recognize that the there is a uh, there is a day that is coming, and it's going to be coming soon. Uh, that the that the impact of COVID on this community is going to be more than what can be borne by the existing um, social safety networks. Um, there is going to be a tremendous amount of need for um, housing support. There's going to be a tremendous amount of need for uh, food support. And there are all kinds of essential um, public service or, or service agencies that, that, are, that are, have been living on a shoestring that are going to need support for uh, PPE response and, and structural responses to enable them to keep going in, in a COVID related atmosphere. Uh, Children's Learning Center, you know, is an example. They, um, you know, they, they can live on a, on a, on a very short budget. And in order to continue to provide um, daycare service for, for people who are on a budget, they have to, they have to spend money on capital improvements to, to make it possible uh, for them to function. And, and that is the, that's the kind of, 
of effort that we're going to be trying to direct all of this money and 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 whatever other money we raise while this uh, pandemic is is in place uh, to support. We we hope to be supporting um, Beverly Bootstraps, um, St. Vincent de Paul, um, all of these agencies that are that are better. Uh, equipped and more familiar with, with dealing with the kinds of problems that we want to address uh, and that will enable us to, to make sure that the money that we, that we deliver to them is used 100% on solutions rather than the, you know, diverting any of it to administrative costs or, or, or you know, developing an overhead system that's capable of addressing it. So it's, you know, it, it, some of the glamour, some of the fun is gone. We had hoped in our hundredth year to, to build a, uh, you know, a, a monument, an edifice of some kind to commemorate, um, to commemorate Rotary. But I think that, that human life um, is, is much more important um, and, and that's where we're gonna, that's where we're focusing our efforts right now is to just make sure that to the extent that we can do it, that nobody suffers uh, the loss of, of, of sustenance or, or, or shelter um, if we can, if, if there's anything at all we can do to prevent it. Well, a lot of great work, Marshall, in a really challenging year. So thanks for your leadership. Uh, Al, do you wanna wrap things up here? Certainly do, uh, uh, and, and, and by that, I want to, first of all, Masha, thank you so much. Uh, this has been, uh, you know, you've, you've set the bar quite high for our future uh, interview, interviewees, so uh, we appreciate that. Just, just, I think you're a guy that people could listen to for, for days on end uh, with one story after another and just a wonderful background, and, and how you share it is, is uh, exceptionally well done. So. Uh, we want to thank you so much for joining us. We want to thank you for your leadership in our Rotary Club. Uh, Mike, thank you for co-hosting along with me. My name is Al Temkin. It's very good to see all of you, and we certainly hope that you stay healthy, you stay safe, enjoy the rest of what is left of summer, and uh, we will see you again sometime very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure.